How you doing? My name is Jerry Luke, and generally you can hear me on Sports Insight Fridays between the hours of 2 and 3.30 on WHCRFM in New York, 90.3, The Voice of Harlem, or WHCR.org if you're not in the actual listening area. The number to call is 212-6506-903. That's 212-6506-903. However, don't call after you've heard this video because I'm probably not going to be there, but do call Fridays Eastern Standard Time between 2 and 3.30 p.m. any Friday, except for Fridays where I'm not there when I'm on vacation. Um, so, what are we going to be talking about today? Um, uh, I think it's, I have a personal issue, actually, that I want to talk about today, and that's maybe a little bit of, uh, maybe uh, it's, it, it involves maturity. And maybe I've gotten that, that bug after many years of uh, flying off the handle. Uh, recently, I've been in situations where, and I can't really describe them because they're sort of ongoing, but the idea is to not go off the handle. And uh, maybe the idea of not going off the handle has, has, one could call it maturity. Maybe some people would go, well, how, how could you not express yourself? How could you not get that off, off your chest? You know, how could you, how could you keep that in so it eats you alive? But maybe part of the part of the idea of being an adult and having maturity is being eaten alive at some point. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but anyway, I've garnered that and I'm moving along. And I just want to let all the people who uh, watch these videos and that I talk to know that I have ascended to a certain level of maturity, and I'm really not happy about it. But what are you going to do? Life is life. So, speaking of uh, maturity, let's see. What do I want to go now? Um, our lack of maturity, I have to talk about the New York Mets because um, even though that I'm a fan, uh, I have to talk about them because of what happened last night. I wasn't, it wasn't going to be one of my leading stories because I try not to talk about them because I get so involved. And generally, um, when I do the, the sports program, I keep the Mets way, way back on the burner, so at least I have some juice at the end of the show and I'm not falling asleep. And people are going, what the heck are you talking about? So last night, um, I'm expecting a decent game. Sundergaard is pitching. Uh, the Mets just came off of uh, uh, a, two, a three and four road trip. They managed to take two um, from Arizona. And, um, and they lost two, but at least they came out three and four. So I'm figuring, hey, it's Sundergaard. I'm going to a jam. I'm really very happy. I can watch, I can watch the Warrior game. I can watch the Met game. Um, I can make music. What a glorious evening. So as soon as I get to, the, to, to, where, the, to where the jam is, I see that uh, I, um, the, the Giants are being congratulated on the screen, and there's no sound, so I'm going, oh, the Giants won. So a little while later, I'm looking at the screen, my eyes pop out. It, it, they were no hit. So the Mets are no hit last night. Well, what does that mean in the scheme of things? Not really much because it's only one game. But it just sort of points out to me the, the problems that the Mets have. Here you have an up-and-coming pitcher who, uh, in Sundergaard who's shown some great, some, some great skills. But again, you have to understand this kid's a rookie. So whether he lost a no-hitter or it was a foul, you know, or, or uh, he lost five to four, it's basically the same game. But the irony here is you had two rookies, two rookies. And so one of them pitches a no-hitter and one of them loses. But... This is only one game. Uh, Mets fans have to be alert to that, but they also have to understand that the Mets have no hitting right now. They have wonderful, wonderful pitching, which somehow you know rears its ugly head from time to time. But the hitting is really uh, is really paltry. So we'll see what goes on in the future. And I congratulate um, the uh, San Francisco rookie, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for um, for winning the game. And uh, you know, Sundergaard is gonna is is around to fight another day. So I'm really happy about that. Now, another topic is um, is horse racing, which I don't really follow, but the the the, the you know the uh, the universe went nuts because there's another triple crown winner. The last triple crown winner was affirmed in '78, and now we have another one. So everybody gets dressed up, goes to Belmont. This time at Belmont, they decided to sell tickets and only a certain amount of tickets. You've got a ticket, you've got a you got a seat on the train. If you didn't, it didn't matter because you weren't going to get in. So there was no insanity at uh, at uh, Port at uh, Penn Station uh, the day of the, the day of the race. So American Pharaoh comes in, and we find out that um, 
the uh, the owner had already sold the uh, the rights the, the breeding rights to the horse for thirty million dollars, and it's like, all right, so who wins here? So everybody goes in, drops some money. Yeah, I think you had to bet five to make three. So that wasn't a pretty good bet. But if you bet, if you had the money, you made some money. Actually, the money probably to be made was on the second and third horses, which I haven't which I haven't really researched yet. But if you come, if you listen to the show on Friday. Uh, you'll find out who they are and how much they made. But to me, the fun part of this whole thing was reading the was reading the uh, the sheet on um, on the, the 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 horses and who trained them and who was racing them and the races that they won. Um, and that's kind of fun. And then you get wrapped up into it and you go, "Oh wow, this twelve to one shot, this could work." So um, we're having a lot of interference from the outside, which is really okay, because sometimes in the studio you hear the same thing, so you just have to move forward. Anyway, so yeah, this 12 to 1 shot is kind of cool, uh, this 15 to 1 shot is kind of cool, but then you get, uh, you get wrapped up in it, and I, you can understand why people bet. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw uh, Leo a curve here, which I really like to do. There was this writer by the name of Bukowski who uh, had a really great story about going to, uh, to, to Santa Anita, and really breaking it down on how the betters are suckers. And, uh, but every once in a while he managed to make some money. Well, he directed a good friend of mine in the works of Charles Bukowski, did a wonderful job. My friend's name is Stephen Payne, and if you ever get a chance, and, and uh, the show is revived, please go see it. It's a great, great um, uh, analysis of, of, uh, of uh, Charles Bukowski's work. I don't recall if that horse racing bit was in there, but, but um, Leo was shaking his head yes and shaking his head no. We don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, um, uh, I also want to uh, uh, send out a hello to Stephen Payne. We don't quite know where he is, but every once in a while he makes an appearance, does something really wonderful, then puts himself back on the shelf. So if you get a chance, Charles Bukowski, by, uh, directed by Leo Farley. That's enough brown nosing for one day. Uh, where are we now? So, um, and speaking of stuff that's been on the shelf for a long time and is now coming off the shelf, the, uh, the, the shenanigans at FIFA, which is the World Body Organization for Soccer, is just becoming unraveled at some speed that is unbelievable. It's now alleged that money that was supposed to go to Haiti, this is charity money, was diverted. There is no amount of money that wasn't taken uh, by some of the by some of the heads allegedly of FIFA. Um, the uh, the games in South Africa, um, money went into their pockets from those games. Now, a world situation is about to develop because they're thinking about canceling the games in Russia and canceling the games in Qatar, and uh, there've been all sorts of shenanigans in Qatar about. I don't know if you 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 have been able to tie this together, but there are a lot of Nepalese uh, working in Qatar, and when the earthquake happened in, uh, in Nepal, uh, these folks weren't allowed to go back to Nepal. Probably they weren't allowed to go back because they would not come back to Qatar because the working conditions were so abysmal. But in the, in the, in the next uh, few months, we're going to see some of the uh, fruits of the labor of the FBI uh, in terms of investigating all of these guys, and it's really horrific. Um, uh, in terms of world events, there's going to be some saber rattling on the part of Vlad in Russia because uh, they've got those games and they need the money uh, because of all the sanctions on uh, on Russia because of what they've been doing. Uh, Russia's trying to get as much money as they can any way they can. And in terms of Qatar, that's a real that's a real uh, that's a real issue because now you're in the middle of the Arab states and you're going to piss those guys off and we need the bases over there. So we can uh, rain hell on the Middle East. Um, so it, this is a real quagmire. But in the, in the weeks and months to come, we're going to see how it unfolds. And it'll be delightful. That's why we are sports analysts. And we go the extra mile for all this insanity. My name is Jerry Luke. This is Sports Insight. Uh, if you want to hear some more of this, please, please watch me between, uh, not watch me, but listen to me between 2 and 3.30 every Friday on WHCRFM in New York, 90.3, The Voice of Harlem. Uh, we can also be heard on whcr.org. The number to call is 212-650-6903. And also be aware that all these episodes are being directed by Leo Farley, who's by far a genius of a director. 
My name is Jerry Luke, and we'll see you on the radio.